Hi there, it's Al. I'm the founder of Simply Wall Street, and today I'm going to take you through watch lists and portfolios on our platform. But before we start, very important Simply Wall Street is here to help you become a better investor. But we don't make decisions for you, and we don't make recommendations on what to buy or sell. We're here to save you time, and we're here to try to help you stay consistent, stay unemotional, and stick to the fundamentals of the business. That being said, let's get straight into it. Now, we're going to start off with watch lists. The easiest place to create your first watch list is actually just in the home, or what we call the dashboard. If, like me, you've just created a brand new account, your watch list will be blank. So the first thing you need to do is to add some companies to that watch list. Um, what you can see here is effectively just some of the popular companies that are on the platform. So if you want to, if you're already watching those, then you can go ahead and add them. So I'll add, for example, Google. I might add Apple. I'm a uh, I have a US portfolio, so don't worry, I can have both. And I'll add Microsoft, which was the one in the last video. At the bottom here, I can also search. So if there's a, sp a specific stock that I want to add that wasn't in that list, I can just, I can just go and search for it here. So um, let's add, what should we add? Let's add Square. So I'm going to add that one. And so as I add my stocks, you'll start to see my dashboard come alive. Um, we'll just talk about that talk about that now. The center part of the dashboard, what we're focusing on is anything that is important that has changed with those stocks you're watching. And so um, you'll see those come up in the middle there. And on the edges, we actually summarize the performance of that watch list you've created. And we also have any other stocks that you've recently viewed. And uh, slightly obscured by my screen at the moment, is we also have the market performance. And so I'm looking at the US market at the moment. I can obviously change that to a different market. But here we can see the best, the top performers um, and the top losers in that market. We can also see which industries have been performing well. At the time of this video, you can see airlines have, have had a bit of a rebound. <laughs> now, that's the dashboard in a snapshot. One final thing it's quite powerful is you can actually click here and you can change the ordering of what you see in the dashboard. So by default, we show anything with a new event first. But if you like, you can actually change that to seven day returns. So you can order by the stocks that have ret returned the best over seven days first. I'm going to now jump into portfolios. And so that's the one I've, I've got so far, which is my watch list. Um, I can create new portfolios from here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this watch list now into a portfolio. And I'm going to do that by adding holdings to it. Okay, And so the easiest way to add holdings to my watch list, to turn a watch list into a portfolio, is actually to click here, Edit Portfolio. And um, what we're going to be doing here, you can see at the moment, Type of Portfolio Watch List. I'm going to change that to Holdings. And what that's going to do is enable the, uh, the column called Shares. And so for me to now turn that portfolio into a holdings portfolio, what I'll need to do is actually enter the number of shares that I hold in each of these stocks. Um, this is a hypothetical portfolio, but just for now, let's assume I hold 10 shares in Google, 5 shares in Apple, 5 shares in Microsoft, and 20 shares in Square. One thing to note here, if you are lucky enough to have a broker that allows you to trade fractional shares, you can enter a fractional number here. It doesn't have to be an integer, so I can do 10.5, for example. That's how I would capture a fractional share. I'm going to save that. And what I've now done is I've actually taken that watch list, I've actually turned it into a portfolio. So actually, what I should probably do is I should also rename it. There we go. I can also change the currency, but I'm going to keep that in US dollars for now. Now that I've created a portfolio with my holdings, we just can just quickly go through the analysis report that we do, and we're also going to go through the returns report. So this is very similar to the company report that I've got another video on. But to start off with, one thing that we calculate is your portfolio snowflake, which you could sort of think about as the 
average or the weighted average actually of all of the companies that are in your portfolio and what that snowflake would look like. And so considering the companies that I just entered, um, that's uh, you know, generally tech companies which I don't pay dividends. It's not surprising that the dividend access is quite low on my portfolio snowflake. The first thing you'll see here is the summary of your returns. Um, and we break that out into capital gain, dividend income, and total return. If I had stocks that were in another currency, we would also capture a currency here to account for how that has affected your portfolio. In this section here, I can see a summary of my holdings. And um, we can actually change how that's ordered, although in this case, I don't have many holdings. So I could order by market value, for example. We have a snapshot of the news, although you can get that uh, better in the dashboard. And from here onwards, what we're doing is different types of analysis, which I'm just going to take you through quickly. The first one is on volatility, which uses a metric called beta. And so what we're doing is we're actually working out what the beta is of your portfolio. And what that tells you is how volatile is your portfolio relative to the market. And that's very powerful, because beta is often used as a measure of risk in terms of people generally don't want to have super volatile portfolios. Here we look at the historical portfolio value. This can also sometimes be called an equity curve. And you can actually see how the value of your portfolio has changed over time. Remember, I can actually turn on and off these different, um, these different stocks. I think uh, the number of shares I entered in Google has by far made it my largest holding. Contributors to returns, this is um, <laughs> all those stocks are up over the, well, uh, over the year. So this looks at a breakdown of, of where my returns are coming from. Diversification, this is simply um, how, my, how my portfolio is distributed amongst the holdings. As I mentioned earlier, it's quite clear that I uh, put too many Google shares in there. And diversification across industries. This is really powerful. If you are someone who is looking to create a diversified portfolio, this chart is a great way to look at where your portfolio is sitting not just at the individual level, but also at the different levels of industry in the different sectors. So this is very powerful. Now what we're doing here with valuation is we are looking, because we, if you look at my other video, you'll see that we do a valuation analysis on every individual stock. So what we're doing here is we're taking the average of all the companies in your portfolio to look at where's your portfolio value sit. And so um, you can see here that we do this do with fair value, which is the main section based on cash flows of each company. We have your portfolio PE ratio. Not surprisingly, this is quite high because I've mostly put tech companies in here. PEG ratio and PB ratio. So it's the same ratios that you'll find in the company report. We do the same thing with the growth rates. And so this is super interesting because these, remember, are based on the analyst forecasts. And so what we've done here is we've taken the forecasts for every company in your portfolio, and we can work out, on average, how much are the earnings expected to grow, on average, how much is the revenue expected to grow, and the same in the past. Okay. Here we have the average return on equity, which is the historical return on equity, which you can find for every company, um, and the other ratios. Finally, we have portfolio debt. Again, we look at the debt to equity ratio of every company in your portfolio, and we can work out the average. Now, these are all weighted averages. And so, as with any average, if any one company has a very high number, that is what can sometimes affect the, uh, this part of the report. We have uh, dividends as well. Now, tech companies generally don't pay dividends, so that's quite low in this case. Um, but if you had more dividend paying companies, this would work. And what we can actually do, because we know the number of shares that in the portfolio which we entered earlier, we also know what we can expect from a contribution on an annual basis from those companies. So that's quite powerful. Now the last part, I'm going back up to the top now. The last part we're going to look at is the detailed returns report. Now in this example, all I put in, if you remember, was the number of holdings, the number of shares or stocks that I hold in each company. And what we do, if you only enter the number of stocks, is we assume that you bought those stocks one year ago. So if I, if I go to the detailed returns report, what I can do here is I can see, assuming I bought the company a year ago, how would I have performed? And 
what dividend payments would I have received? So in this example, Google doesn't pay a dividend, but Apple does pay a dividend. So if I bought five shares in Apple a year ago, I would have so far have received three dividend payments, and this is the amount. And so the returns report is quite detailed because we're looking at those different aspects of what makes up your return. Um, and you can, if it's just a holdings portfolio where we've just entered the number of holdings, we're going to enter the transactions in a bit. But if we just enter the number of holdings, I can actually change the period as well. So I can change this to three years if I wanted to. And so now the same report is generated. And you can see many more dividend payments for a company like Apple because it's assumed that I bought that company three years ago. What we're going to do now, we're going to take this portfolio from Rather than just have the number of holdings in each company, we're going to actually put a transaction in. And so I go back to my edit portfolio, which is the button here. And I change the type of portfolio to transactions. And it's going to show me a lot of red columns, because if it's a transaction, we need to know when was that transaction, what was the price, and the type, buy or sell. So in this example, um, I'm going to choose a date in the past. Okay, so let's say I bought, uh, let's say I bought these in 2019. I'm going to choose a random date here. When you put a date in, it will automatically tell you the end of day share price. So you, that can help a lot because you sometimes don't really need to know the exact share price that you bought it for. You can also check that the price you bought it for is is roughly within that range, but that might not be the price you purchased on. Yeah, because you would have probably purchased it during the day at some point. I can this 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 screen. Whoops, this screen works just like um, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. So I can actually drag these cells down like that, and you'll see it will automatically complete all of the end of day prices for me on those dates. I'm going to I'm going to put all of these in as a buy transaction. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to add one more transaction just to show you guys how it works as a sell transaction. So to do that, I right click and I go insert row below. So like I said, this works just like a normal spreadsheet. I'm going to say that actually I'm going to, I'm going to sell my Google shares. Okay. So I'm going to sell those. Remember there's two listings of Google. We've got to be careful of that. So I'm going to pick the same one. Okay. But let's say I sold those Google shares last week. Okay. It pre-enters the price. I'm going to sell all 10 shares. I'm going to put that in as a sell transaction. And we're going to see how that looks in a second. So now I'm going to go and save that. Okay. And so this is now a transactions portfolio, right? It's, it's not just a number of holdings. We've actually got every transaction in here. And because I entered that sell transaction for Google or Alphabet, when I scroll to my holding section, I can see it says liquidated. So it's actually, that one's been sold. I bought and then I've sold that one. If I want to hide my liquidated transactions, I can just click hide liquidated and ignore them. But some people like to see them on there to know that they uh, to know they hopefully made some good decisions in their investing. Um, the rest of the report, now that I've added, added those transactions, is, is the same, except for it just accounts for all those different aspects. But if I go to my detailed returns report, um, this is now based on, rather than being one year ago or three years ago, this is based on those actual dates. So if I go down, I can actually see the buy and sell transaction that I made with Google, and I can calculate exactly what was my gain or my capital gain from that, from that, uh, from that trade. These dates can be changed, which is very powerful if you ever want to know between two dates, say in a financial year, what your returns were, so that can be that can be done there, and you can download this as a as a CSV, and you can open it in Excel or on Google Sheets if you want to keep your own if you want to keep your own records. One final thing I'm going to show you is currency. Some people have holdings in multiple different countries, and we account for currency here. So if I wanted to do that, what I can do is add in here uh, a company in a different market. So let's add one that's popular in Australia at the moment. Let's add A2 Milk. Now, I added this company, but I haven't added any transactions. So what I'm going to have to do, and by the way, you can also add transactions in here if you like. It's very straightforward. You click on these three dots, and you go Edit Transactions. 
So I'm going to add a transaction for um, for A2 milk. I'm going to make it earlier in the year. Let's say say it was then. Oh, there's no price on that date. Maybe that's because it wasn't trading. If it was a weekend, you wouldn't get a price, which makes sense, right? Oh no, my window is hidden. <laughs> Let's move that out of the way. So I'm going to add that there. Put that back. Cool. I've added, I added that transaction. By the way, here you'll notice the option that if you want to reinvest your dividends, this is where you'll tick reinvest dividends. Now I'll let my portfolio update, but the main thing I just want to show you guys is that now that I've added an international uh, company or a company that's not on the same currency as the rest of the portfolio, I'll now see this currency gain part show up here. And if you go to the detailed returns report, you'll also see that we account for currency. So if you're someone that does hold stocks in different countries, this is a very powerful way of tracking how you've been doing and how to account for currency, which can often be quite challenging. We'll leave it at that for now. Make sure you check out my other videos on our screener and on a company report. And have a, have a great day.